All right, peace and greetings, YouTubers. So Muhammad Ali, like man, I tell you, we're losing so many great ones this year. It's hurting my heart. Like there's just so many legends and icons that have died this year. 2016 is just, man, it's just taking everybody out. Um, but you know, within the black community, there's just been so many icons and legends to pass. And Muhammad Ali, when I say he's a staple in the black community, he's a staple in our community. He's a staple of just an overall iconic individual. Like that's that he is the epitome of that. So it, it, it kind of hurts my heart to see him pass. Um, but I will say there's so many elements to his character that make him such a great person. And we can always spend all day talking about his iconic boxing career because I say it's a legendary one. He has stats unheard of. And, you know, even like the fact that his very first fight was like he won by like a round six knockout. And you could talk about the Joe Frazier fights and you could spend all day just talking about all of the great things he's done and, you know, winning the gold medal at the Olympics and all. But there's more to Muhammad Ali than boxing. Muhammad Ali was somebody who had a way with words, and I think that's my favorite aspect of his character is the fact that he had a way with words, and he was able to get people to think because he wasn't afraid to say things that were unpopular in order to bring justice to different groups of people who had been disenfranchised. Like, I, I look at him as somebody who had a way of not only, you know, saying things, but also listening. So when you look at something like the Kuwait 15, um, I think it was Kuwait, or it might have been Iraq, but the, the 15 hostages in Kuwait, or it was either Kuwait or Iraq, I think it was Kuwait though, back in like 1989, 1990. And at the time, you know, everybody's trying to figure out how we're going to get these people back to America. You know, they've been over there for four months. You know, the UN is trying to figure out what to do, but they're not really moving on anything. George Bush 1 is kind of trying to figure it out as well. And Muhammad Ali's like, you know what, I'll just go over there and talk to Saddam Hussein myself and I'll bring them back. And they're like, no, you, you bet not. The UN's like, you bet not go over there. And George Bush, don't know, don't interfere, you're gonna mess up what we already got going, because you know, we got the people at the Pentagon and the this and the that, and the people at Fort This and the that, and you know, we got it squared away, we got a strategic plan. Muhammad Ali was like, we don't got time for all that. So he went right over there, hopped on a plane, he went, sat in a room with Saddam Hussein, had a conversation, boom, everybody's on the plane back home. And see, the thing about it is, that kind of, it's symbolic of how I think the world should work, you know what I mean? Like, a lot of times, we're jumping into wars and doing all kind of things that we don't even really need to do. It's just more so people need to just listen to each other because I'm not a fan of, I, I'll come back to that later, but long story short, somebody like Muhammad Ali and maybe a handful of other people are the only kind of people that would have been able to pull something like that off. This is a time period where you're, we're, we're, we're this close to getting into the Gulf War. And so the relationship between the United States and, and, and a place like Iraq or, or Kuwait I, I think, I swear, I cannot remember where the people were. I think they were Kuwait, but I'm just going to pretend they're Iraq for the purpose of this statement. Um, <laughs> you know, there's just, the tension was, it was thick. You could, you didn't even, you couldn't even cut it with a knife. You needed like a freaking saw and just, and just saw into it. That's how thick the tension was. And for somebody like him to just fly over there and handle that, you know, that's something that is commendable. Like he just had a way with words. He was thought provoking. He had no filter when it came to addressing what was wrong. And I think that's what I like about him the most. I hate that the media always says like he's somebody who transcends race. He transcended race. I hate that phrase because mainly it's basically confirming the fact that the world is a terrible place and there's a, a racist power structure that basically oppresses everybody who's not white. And in my opinion, transcending race means that you basically maneuver yourself into a position where you keep white people comfortable to the point where they will accept you, where they will accept what you deliver, accept what you present, accept you as a, as, as a person. They almost see you as not one of them, but close enough to the point where they will consider you to be, you know, somewhat important. And I think that's bull. Like, and I don't think somebody like Muhammad Ali would have been someone to transcend race because to be very honest, Muhammad Ali was very unapologetically black with no shame, very empowered by blackness and spent all of his time empowering the black community and had no shame in doing it. And anybody who tried to come after him about that, he would easily shut down. And that's why that, what I enjoyed. If you go on YouTube, there's a ton of interesting clips and interviews where, you know, he's being asked questions and he gives these very insightful answers. Um, and one of the funniest ones I found, I thought this was hilarious for some reason, but um, he was doing some interview to talk about something going on in the world. And there's a woman in the audience who doesn't like what he has to say. So she asks, you know, so, you know, she gets the mic and she's like, um, you know, I just don't like what he's saying because he's so arrogant and blah, 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 blah. And he was like, ain't nothing I said, Eric, that's arrogant. You just don't like the fact that the nigga said it. And I died. And I don't know why I thought that was so funny, but really it was the truth. He was like, you know, to be honest, you're so used to being able to kind of just have your two cents and say things how you feel it. You're not used to somebody black coming back and giving you the same thing that you've given them. And not only doing it, but doing it with assertiveness and actually being correct factually. 
And so he's basically saying, you know, you don't expect for a black person to have any intelligence. You don't expect for a black person not to be afraid to say their two cents and be unapologetic about it because you guys are so used to just us walking on eggshells and being so complacent and obedient so that we don't get in trouble. Kind of. So he just goes in on that and then the woman's like, well, you need to understand that I'm a minority too. And she's like, you know, I'm a woman from England, you know, like a white woman from England. And he's like, what, England? You know, that's like the top of the matriarchy. Like, you, and so the funniest part is like, he asked, I was like, how many of you in here honestly believe that she as a white woman has a harder than me in America as a black man? And it was so funny because the audience, mind you, the whole audience is white. They're just like, nah, nah, bro, you lost that one. So it's kind of like, um, you know, that was just interesting. And like, the thing about it is that he just, he had so much that he wanted to share with the world. He wanted to just enlighten people and, and share just common sense with folks and really reach out to the community. And I hated that the media always tried to really bash him and try to turn him into somebody that he wasn't, especially in the 60s and the 70s, because this is a time period where they're trying to kind of erase that whole element of racism that was in our history, and they were trying to kind of re revamp the image of America. So, you know, you know, they didn't like Muhammad Ali too much because he was talking too much. You know, they liked Nat King Cole back in the day, you know, because Nat King Cole was just an entertainer. He just sang. He wasn't going to say anything too thought-provoking. Nothing against Nat King Cole because he was a legend, but, you know, he was somebody who purposely made a choice to stay away from any kind of debate or conversation about race because he didn't want to mess up his brand. He wanted to just really focus on the music and entertainment. And so the media, they like people like Nat King Cole because Nat King Cole wasn't going to say too much. Like there was even a situation where, you know, he was performing in front of a white audience. He starts getting booed and he's like, I don't understand why you guys are booing me. I don't do that marching stuff. I don't mess with Martin Luther King. I just sing it. I'm like, man, Nat, come on. But he, he, he woke up towards the end, so it's good. Um, but, you know, Muhammad Ali is somebody who just, he stood for what was right. And I thought it was commendable that, you know, he was willing to go to jail for not going to Vietnam. You know, they sentenced him to five years. Um, I don't think he ever actually had to spend actual time in jail. It was like, a, it was overturned. But like he was saying, I'm not going to go and fight for a country that doesn't even, I don't even have basic rights in this country. Why am I going to go and take bullets for a country that doesn't even like me? And why am I going to go fight some people that I don't even know? Because when you look at something like war, which is what I was talking about, I think earlier, when you look at something like war, war is not really between the people that are affected by the governments. Well, yeah, most of us are just living and walking down the street and walking our dogs. War is between the higher powers and the governments who don't like each other. So if y'all don't like each other, y'all get in the boxing ring and fight. I'm not going over there and taking a bullet and, and trying to kill somebody I've never met before. Why am I killing somebody I don't know? Why am I bombing somebody who, who has done nothing to me on, on a structural level? They're just existing the same way I am. And so that was his way of looking at it, and he was really shunned during that time period because they gave him that sentence. They were like, you can never box again. And like, the media really tried to end him with that. And it's so funny because years later, it's like now they're like, oh, that was so commendable. Um, but he was somebody who just, he had no time for nonsense. And I love that he was so empowering to black children, to the black community. To be a black child in the 60s and 70s when, you know, there's all this turmoil and stuff going on with the power structure, when, with going on with race. Now, I mean, it's still happening in 2016, but to be a black child in the 60s and 70s with all the things going on with race, and to see someone who was so powerful, who was so iconic, who had so much influence, and not only that, but to be somebody who was black and unapologetically black and telling little black children and black boys and black girls, be proud, be black, don't be afraid of who you are, and don't you be ashamed, and don't you let anybody tell you that anything you do is inferior because nothing about us is inferior, and everything that we can do, you know, it, it just goes to show how powerful we are. Like, for us, that to be an image that a child had to look up to in the 60s and 70s, that is something that is iconic. So when people say he transcended race, no, he didn't transcend race. People flocked to him because he was just somebody who was very transparent and inspiring. It had nothing to do with him keeping white people comfortable and then they decided that they would like him because a lot of white people can't stand They couldn't stand Muhammad Ali. You go on Twitter right now, the entire Make America Great demographic is having a field day on Twitter bashing him because, oh, he was Muslim. He's Muslim. Because I think Donald Trump even made a tweet saying, oh, you know, you know, rest in peace, he was a great man, this, that, and the third, and all his followers over there, literally, what? He was a Muslim. How dare you? What, what, what are you doing? You know, so there's just, he was just a great person. I think there was just so much about him that was just so iconic in the charity work and the outreach. And even though he had Parkinson's disease and he wasn't able to do a lot of things, he was still doing work in the community. He was still fighting for justice for other groups of people. Like, and I think that's what's respectful. That's how you want to go out. Because when we talk about the boxing career, it lasted for, what, about a decade and a half? But it's what he did in addition to the boxing is what made him legendary and iconic. So you can say that he transcended race, whatever you want to say, but in the end, he's somebody who just became an icon for everybody. And it wasn't because he was trying to keep certain groups of people comfortable, it's because he was true to himself. And that 100% genuine aspect of his character is what attracted people to him, and that's what made him great. And that's why we will miss him dearly. So that's my two cents of Muhammad Ali. Share your great memories, your, your thoughts. 
anything you want to share about him. Um, you know, it, it's so sad that we're losing so many, but I like that society always gave him his flowers while he was here. He's always been highly respected, at least since the 80s. He's just been an icon. And so I like that he's not dying in vain and now we're just now, oh, you know, we really missed out on Muhammad Ali. We should have appreciated him while he was here. He's somebody who we appreciated. You know, that iconic poster of him with the white shorts where he has the little fist and he just did the knockout. Like, that is like a poster that's, that was in like my high school classroom when I was, when I was coming up. So it's like, you know, he, he, you know, we appreciate him while he was here, and I'm glad that that is the, I guess, I'm glad that's the reality of what it is when it comes to somebody like Muhammad Ali. So, that's my two cents, and, you know, he'll be greatly missed, and kudos and, and, and condolences to his family. And, you know, it's just, let's just continue that legacy of greatness as we come up through the generations. You know, if he's somebody that inspired you, make sure that you're doing your very best so that you can be of that same caliber of inspiration and, and inspire the next generation of upcoming people. And that's my two cents. I'm out. Subscribe.